Today I'm going to be looking at what's the best value microcontroller development board you can buy on AliExpress. In a previous video I looked at this Raspberry Pi Pico Zero which is this tiny little development board which has got the Raspberry Pi 2040 microcontroller on it. It's got a um, RGB LED and it's a pretty solid board. I liked it a lot. But in the comments of that video there was loads of suggestions on other things to try and one of those suggestions was this. So it's a ESP32 C3 Mini. So it's really tiny. Just as a comparison, it's almost identical size to the um, Pico Zero. Both got USB-C, which is really convenient. This doesn't have the RGB LED, but what it does have, which is a lot more useful in my opinion, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on this, whereas the Pi doesn't have that. So this is potentially a lot better, and it's a similar price. Whilst I was trawling through those AliExpress pages, I actually found this version of the board. So it's still got the C3 microcontroller, but it's actually got this tiny little OLED screen, which I thought could be useful, and pretty cool. So what we're gonna do is we're a look at the main features of this. Does it work? What can we do with it? How much power does it use? Because obviously that's important in a lot of projects. And we'll compare those specs to the Pi and C, which is really the best value. And by value, I don't mean the cheapest. So with that, let's crack on. So here are those three boards I mentioned. We've got the Pico Zero, we've got the ESP32 C3 with the OLED screen, and we've just got the standard ESP32 C3. I'm gonna focus most of this video on the one with the OLED. I've already spoke a lot about the Pico Zero, and the reason I'm focusing on this OLED one is because basically the batch of these ones I've bought from AliExpress have got really poor Wi-Fi. So they do work, but actually the Wi-Fi is super weak you know you can't even go a few meters away from your, your your router or if you're using this as the hotspot you can't go very far away so it's not very useful in my opinion so we'll come back to it we'll have a quick look at it but for now let's focus on comparing these two so just to go over its specification basically an ESP32 C3 as I've already mentioned it's got 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi it's got a 32-bit RISC single core processor so be careful because a lot of ESP32 models have a dual core. This only has a single core, 80 megahertz, and it has four megabytes of flash memory, which is pretty useful. Obviously, it's a 3.3 volt chip. In terms of I.O., it's basically got 10 connectable pins, um, basically numbered one to 10. Out of those 10, eight and nine are the SDA and SCL, respectively. There's obviously a serial port, because you can see it's labeled RX and TX. There are six analog to digital inputs, so that's basically zero to two, so these three pins here, and three to five so those three pins there can all be used as analog ins it's got a reset and it's got a boot I believe that's the ceramic antenna let's have a look at the other side of the board you've got the actual ESP32 microcontroller that's it there these look like a couple of diodes that looks like a crystal oscillator and that looks like a voltage regulator although I've got no circuit diagram so I don't really know for sure finally on this side of the board other than a quite a few discrete resistors and capacitors we've actually got LED so this is the onboard LED that's just a power LED that LED is actually connected to IO number 8 so so pin 8 which is here um, so just be aware if you're using pin 8 you're actually also connected to the LED whilst you're doing that so be aware first thing I'm going to test is the power consumption so let's give that a go have a new toy that's this USB power meter so let's plug this in and this is straight out of the packet don't forget so there's only the screen being powered up at the moment. So you can see the USB is providing its 5.1 something volts, it's providing 23, 24 milliamps and there's around 118 milliwatts going to power this particular microcontroller. So roughly around 20 milliamps, 5 volts, um, relatively low power device, right? Let's just try the Pi now, the Pi Pico. So yeah, slightly lower, 15, 16, 17, 18 milliamps, less than 100 milliwatts. But again, this doesn't have a screen. Let's have a look at that other C3 board. So that's actually similar to the one with the OLED. I imagine the OLED's not using much, but yeah, I think that's a fair conclusion. The, the C3 uses slightly more power than the Pico Zero, 
So I've opened up a new sketch in Arduino IDE and obviously I need to set the right development board. This is not a Nano 32. And all I'm gonna do is search for a P32 C3. See what happens. There's loads of options. I haven't tried them all. Um, let's try this one. And I'm just gonna hit send program. See what happens. A few moments later. So it looks like the program's been uploaded. Okay, and there's no change. Obviously, this is just a, a null code. It doesn't do anything, but all right, let's try a blink. One thing that's curious is the screen hasn't changed, hasn't turned off. Um, let's try and flash that onboard LED. Wish the window stayed in the same position. So it's actually on pin eight. Let's flash that. So there you can see it's actually a blue LED and it's flashing. That's a good sign. That basically confirms that we've got the right board selected and we're able to sort of program and communicate with the chip and the I.O. etc. etc. I think the main reason I'm interested in this board is basically because of the Wi-Fi. So that's really the thing I, I want to be able to get running. Let's just get an example sketch that works with Wi-Fi and give that a try. So Wi-Fi, let's do simple Wi-Fi server. So this basically turns an LED on when you go to a certain web page so that's not where our LED is let's change that to 8 and let's just upload as is see what happens so it's compiling the sketch if I bring my phone in you can see that there's actually um, a your AP there so let's click on that see if we can connect so we've connected and let's give it a test so connect let's go to the turn off oh no that turns it on doesn't it let's turn it off there you go now the real test will be when I go downstairs and see if it works Well, I'm back and the light's on. I'll have to check the video to make sure I actually turned on and off. I tried in a few different rooms. So I think we're looking for at least two clicks. The phone stay connected the whole time, which is a bonus. So I'll leave some text on the screen saying if it seemed to work well. Certainly it stayed connected to my phone, which, which is much better than this other C3 that I was using um, a few months ago. Finally then, let's have a, just a play around with the screen and see if we can get that working. So to use the screen on this little microcontroller, I actually did a little bit of Googling because it wasn't immediately obvious how you should do it. Found this really useful post on Stack Exchange, explaining, giving quite a lot of detail, probably better than the AliExpress advert. So as far as I know, you just need to copy this code into Arduino IDE and make sure you've got these two libraries installed. This library I got from GitHub. Um, you simply Google it, you'll find it. Go to source, download a zip file of this copy it into your um, Arduino directory and install it. Um, really straightforward, so pretty much the same as you do for any library. Um, it's not there in the library manager, I should say, so you need the zip file from Git. So let's give that a try. So I've got a blank sketch. I'm gonna copy this in. I've skipped the bit where I installed the library. You, you don't need to see that. Copy and paste that in. Let's run that sketch. A few moments later. So there you go, you can see it's actually saying the size of the screen 72 by 40 pixels, so that code works really easy. Let's just change that to something more interesting, just to make sure we can change it. That's pretty cool. So just to summarize this video, we spent some time looking at this ESP32C3 module, which has got this inbuilt OLED screen. It's actually really great. So the Wi-Fi works, it's a decent connection. Everything seems to work well on it, including the screen. Not sure how useful that screen is, but it's still a nice thing to have. The big question is, is it better than the Raspberry Pi RP240? Um, I'd say it is. That added advantage of Wi-Fi is massively useful. Again, you can program both in Arduino IDE, you can program both in MicroPython, so I'd much rather have the option of using Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on this particular microcontroller than I would have the limited options for connectivity on this. It's a massive win, it's just 82 pence in the UK delivered to my door um, for this microcontroller with the screen, with the Wi-Fi, with everything, so it's a win. Hope you found this video useful. I encourage you to go out and try some of these microcontrollers yourself. They're really great for projects. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, put them in the chat and I'll see you in the next one.